welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for all the love on the Mamma Mia 2 inspired hairstyle tutorial I did. I haven't had a video do that well in a while and you guys really seemed to love it so I thought I would follow up with a natural but glowy makeup look and a lot of you wanted to see Sophie and Donna's from the second movie but I thought the first movie's wedding makeup was just absolutely stunning and they're all pretty similar so this is the look that I went with and of course we do have the hair and I did a little DIYing as well. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and comment down below who you ship Donna with and let's get started. I already have a bit of self tanner on and I've prepped my lips with my fave balm. This is the Aveda Feed My Lips Pure Nourish Mint Lip Treatment. And my favorite base is actually the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I've been wearing this one alone and I love the look on the skin. I typically would layer Wonder Glow and then foundation for a higher coverage look, but this gives a tiny amount of tint while still having the same glowing effect as Wonder Glow, even a little bit more intense. And then any blemishes, I'm using my Too Faced Born This Way concealer. My skin actually has been acting up quite a bit, but with a tanned, freckled look, it'll really camouflage it without using a ton of coverage. Next up, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Bronzing Stick. This smell is to die for, it's so vanilla-y, and I'm speckling this over my forehead, cheeks, nose, chin for a realistic sun-kissed look. Adding a little bit of Too Faced Sweetheart's Bronzer. This one is one of my all-time favorite bronzers. It has a bit of sheen to it and it looks gorgeous on the collarbones as well, kind of picks up the light. I'm trying out a new brand that I just came across. It's another cruelty-free brand and uh, this shade is a bright corally peach and I'm applying this to my cheeks in a very natural way, focusing it more on the apples like Sophie has. And a big part of Sophie's look is how peachy and glowy her skin is all throughout. So I'm adding this on the tip of the nose, which looks super cute. And then so the color is harmonious, I'm applying to the chin, forehead, and speckling it again around the face. I do faux freckles a lot in my everyday makeup routine, and I've tried out a bunch of different products, but basically any brow or liner. This time I'm using a bronze Urban Decay liner, and the key to making these look realistic is to pat it into the other liquid products before you've set with powder. This will slightly subdue that dot, and my favorite powder for quite some time is a translucent setting veil, and this is very natural looking, and it mattifies while still letting some glow shine through, and this is by Hourglass. Just combing my natural brows upwards, and mine are a little bit more full in shape than Amanda's and darker of course, so I'm just lightening them up using a little bit of a golden shadow, and I kind of like the more subtle brows for this look, even though I typically love a fuller, um, big bushy brow. And now for some contouring. So I'm taking a contour shade between my eyes in a bit of a diagonal line, and then into a rounded shape just above my crease. Keep this pretty subtle because you do want a little bit of structure, but a defining characteristic of Amanda is her far apart eyes, so we don't want this shading to bring the eyes too close together. And I'm not doing a super snatch look at all, we're keeping this very sun-kissed and natural like I've said. Take your favorite highlighter and apply this to the very tip of the nose as well as the cheekbone. I really wasn't trying to look exactly like Amanda because I do want the makeup to look as minimal as possible, but I will play with the eye shape a bit to help resemble her beautiful eye shape. Finishing up with one last blush, this is again very peachy and I'm bringing this not only through the cheeks but rounded through above the crease and then we're also fading this up to the brow bone. Love a warm pop of color there. And one of my favorite Too Faced collections is the Natural line. The packaging is so gorgeous and I love the scent of these products as well. And my favorite highlight is Starlight. So it has a bit of a pink shift and I love this um, on the brow bone as well as the very top of the cheekbone. Again, doing a lot of layering. Of course, you can take some of these products out, but I wanted to show you some of my favorite cruelty free products. For all over the lid, I'm taking a deeper brown bronzy cream eyeshadow and fade this from the lash line to all over the lid. I wanted a bronze base and I'm also bringing this under the bottom lash line. I faded the shadow a little downward from the outer V and I'm keeping the bottom half heavier on the outer corner. Go in with a richer brown shadow fading from right next to the tear duct 
through the lash line and then the outer V, leaving a little bit of space in the center, and this will give a puffier, smiling eye type of look. It'll also create a bit more of rounded definition so that it makes the eye look a bit more prominent. Again, using the Too Faced Natural Collection, I took a shadow that will pick up the light for the center of the lid. You can keep using cream shadows if you want to, but I just like to use cream shadows usually as my base. And one more deeper a matte brown shadow in the outer V to taper out the eyes a bit more. And time for a touch of mascara. I chose Glossier to try out and I'm focusing on the outer lashes. My eyes are super round, so I took a bit of shadow as liner in the tight line. And final step you can take for an Amanda inspired eye is to add a white eyeliner or a light shadow to the outer waterline. And then for lips, I'm starting with the Aveda Feed My Lips Lip Primer. I'm newly obsessed with this and I could never really do a believable overline. And this primes my lips so well for it because it just smooths out any fine lines and adds the perfect base. So little touch of liner for that fuller upper lip and a bit less of a cupid's bow. And finally, I'm just using a balm. This one is by Burt's Bees and I thought it gave a very fresh pop of natural color and still slightly peachy like the blush. Painting a little bit more of that cream blush again. I love this product. Touch-ups here and there, and there is my very sun-kissed, super blushy, yet natural-looking makeup inspired by Sophie using all cruelty-free products. And I found this lip shade also by Burt's Bees that looks really similar to her promo poster. I have already curled my hair away from my face, and in the first Sophie look I did, all the curls went the same direction around my whole head, but this time on either side of your face, you're going to have the curls spiraling away, and I used a tapered wand like I did in the Titanic hair tutorial. I also lightened up my hair color by adding in a blonde extension. That's just another way that I bring in some lightness without actually coloring my own hair, different from the shade that I like it for every day. And Sophie wears a pretty headband, and the way it's positioned, it almost looks like a slight halo. And the only way I could figure out how to do this without running out of hair length is to create a section of hair at the back, and then clip in a braided extension. From there, bring it around and over to the other side, securing with bobby pins as I go. I did this twice with different braid sizes, and the smaller braid is actually more accurate. I don't know why I redid it to get a bigger braid, but either way, it's up to you, and because we have the hair in the center part, we're going to pick up a face framing piece and twist it around and through the braid. Adding a little bit more hair into that first section and I'm twisting it once again around the braid and securing with some air spray from Aveda for some volume. This is such a great hairspray, especially for setting the curls because it helps hold the style but never feels crunchy or heavy. Doing a little DIY for more of a Greek goddess vibe and Sophie's Curls looked very tight and natural around the underside of her hair by her ear, so I'm using the bubble wand and adding tons of curls and picking up very small sections and adding, again, very tiny spirals on top. Adding in these beautiful white fabric flowers from Michaels. And playing with some more accessories like little rhinestones throughout the front section. I picked up some crystal-y ones and then also some blue because I noticed that's what Sophie had. a little DIY veil as well. So here's a look at the completed style. Thank you. 
I hope you'll try out this Sophie inspired look and if you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know also in the comments if you are going to be a bride or maybe you are going to be a bride soon, what's your favorite bridal style? Like do you like it princessy, bohemian? Some people like have their weddings all planned out in their head from when they're a kid. I honestly have no idea, I've never really dreamed of it, but to be honest, I really like this look. And you might have noticed that I used all cruelty free today, so thumbs up for that and I'll see you in my next video.